Hello, CC Essentials families. Since I know a lot of you um, are anxiously awaiting the um, Trivium tables to return to the bookstore because they're currently sold out and you can't pre-order them or anything, I thought I would go through the Trivium tables that I received and show you what is in them just so you have an idea of the differences. Because on one hand, they are very different. Um, obviously, we now have three trivium tables in place of the one English grammar trivium table. They have blank space on them instead of just being the masters. Um, but there's a lot of the same information, you know, so we still have the same charts for the most part. Um, so I just thought I would go through them for you. So let's take a look. I'm going to start with the sentences. So the sentence classification, this has chart A on the front. And I have a tendency, I always want to open it this way, which is not the right way. If you open it backwards, you know, the opposite of the way a book opens, you have chart A and you have the mass or the blank chart A next to it so that your student can practice copying or they can fold it over and see how much they um, know and then they can compare or fill in the rest if, if they don't know all of it. On the other side of that, we have chart H. So the conjunctions and again, the master and the blank. If we turn the whole thing over, we have the charts with the example sentences here. So B, G, M, and P. So our example sentences for simple, compound, complex, and compound complex sentences. Um, all here, no blanks for these, just the masters. And then on the outsides, we have spelling rules. So that is everything that is contained in the sentences trivium table. Next, let's take a look at our nouns trivium table. So this says nouns and modifiers. And so on the front, we have our nouns. And again, you open this way. And we have the blank noun chart next to it. And if we open the other side here, we have adjectives and the blank adjective chart. So adjectives modify nouns and pronouns. So that makes sense that they go together. Those are the modifiers of nouns. If we go back to the front and open it this way, we have prepositions and the blank prepositions. And on this side, we have pronouns and the blank pronouns. So this is just, these are four uh, masters and four blanks on this noun one. So we have nouns, pronouns, adjectives, and prepositions on here. Oh, and always on the bottom of the preposition list are interjections. In our verb trivium table, this is also verbs and modifiers. So we have verbs, and we open up this way and we have the blank verbs. And then on the other side, we have adverbs and the blank adverbs chart. And so again, adverbs modify verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. So it makes sense that adverbs are in the verb trivium table. If we go back to the front and open it up, we have a blank verb anatomy chart. So um, we don't have a filled in to be, to have, or to play in any of the trivium tables, but this gives you a blank space to do any of those um, that you wanted to. And opposite of that, it has the verb anatomy explained. So this is chart double A, this is the advanced chart, and it just explains um, what is going into that chart and why we are filling it out in that way. And so you could do this, fill this chart out with any verb. Pick any verb and you could have your student um, fill it out. That would definitely be a um, advanced second or a third year um, student challenge. And then when we open up the other side, we have chart D and um, chart Q is squeezed in here. So um, it makes the spacing on this pretty small and I think this will be difficult for students to write in well, but it gives us um, pretty much all of the charts. I believe we have um, in the old trivium table, we had nine masters and that was all that was in it. In the new, the three new trivium tables, we have 14 out of the 17 masters. So like I said, we don't have to have, to be, and to play in there. So that makes up the 17. And we have 11 blank charts in there. So space for your student to copy um, 11 different charts. So there's a lot of information there. There's a lot of space there. Um, do I recommend them would probably be the next question. And that really depends on your preference. I like using the Trivium tables, um, just copying them, putting them in page protectors. And so um, they're all just alphabetical order. And that's what my student uses. Um, so that's easy, it's simple, it's portable. Um, these work in the same way. So it really is your preference. Um, actually, what 
my top preferences, and I'm waiting for the PDFs to come out this year, is um, last year I made for my student a two-page spread. So I took the blank charts and I enlarged them as big as I could so that they would fit across two pages. And that really gave my student lots of space to fill out as much as they could about whatever the chart was. And I like the spacing on that. It worked really well. And so I plan on doing that again um, for my students. And then I will uh, put those on CC Connected. So that is really my preference. I bought them so that I could, you know, take a look at them as a tutor. I wanted to be able to share with everybody, let them see what they look like and that type of thing. Um, I don't know that we will use them a whole lot personally, but we'll see. Everybody's different. Some people love these, um, love the simplicity of the simplicity of them and the portability of them um, so everybody's different and there's not really a right or wrong answer there with respect to class I will not use them in class I won't recommend my families bring them to class and the reason for that is with three of them if I say to my students hey we're gonna look at the pronoun chart today the first thing that's going to happen is everybody's going to get all these charts out and which which one is that in what are we looking for and there will be a lot of questions and I foresee it being difficult to get everybody on the same page um, because there are three of them. That would just cause difficulty. Um, so I do something completely different for class. Um, I did a whole video on that. I, I make binders for my students. That way everybody has the same information. And really in class, we only need the masters. So um, that's what I do for class and it makes life really simple. So that, those are the Trivium tables. Let's take a look at the analytical task sheet because that one is definitely different this year. If we look at the front, we have um, kind of a condensed diagramming details. So we have the sentence patterns, um, examples of compound and complex sentences, um, compound, how to diagram compound words, how to diagram modifiers. So it's just kind of condensed the basics of diagramming right here on the front. Um, have to find the right so you could flip to the back for start here and so this is um, where you would write a sentence when you're analyzing a sentence task one dictate it write it down task two determine does it have all the components of a sentence um, does it start with a capital letter does it have an end mark is there a subject and a predicate does it make sense is everything punctuated correctly all that kind of stuff um, so question confirmation is step three so now we have a flow chart here um, to help us walk through the question confirmation so it's a little different uh, than what we've done before and some of it has changed a little bit all of this is in the guide so nothing in any of the trivium tables um, is not already accessible to you when you purchase the guide. So keep that in mind. Um, nothing is new here. It might be oriented or changed just a little bit to fit into the flow of a Trivium table. But otherwise, you already have all of this information. So um, task two, task three, the question confirmation, lots of space here to diagram. And then we turn the whole thing over. And we have task five here. So we modify the sentences, playing with the um, purposes, changing the structures, making it um, passive or active, um, and adding modifiers. So all of those things here on task five. This is actually a page that I tend to just talk through and ask my student, well, how would we make it um, exclamatory? How would we make it interrogative? And going through those types of steps verbally more so than writing it all out. And then we come to the quid et quo. So this is task six, and this definitely looks different than it used to. It doesn't line up the way that it used to, um, and I think that's confused a lot of people. I think I'm going to do a video on that, um, sort of walking through what that looks like. Um, it's more simple than I think we realize. It just doesn't look the same, so a lot of us um, old timers, um, old schoolers who have been doing the critical for a while are confused by it. So um, I'll do a video on that and help you guys figure that out. But this is everything that is in the analytical tasks. So all of the tasks, one through six, some diagramming information and space for you to do the diagram. So this I really do find to be a handy um, place for your student to do, do their work on um, analyzing sentences. So I do like this. Um, it is, again, something that I put in a page protector because I, we have all of these pages in the guide, and so that's another option. You can put it in page protectors for your student. Um, it's really up to you. But I wanted you all to see what the Trivium tables look like, 
what the differences are um, to help you decide do you feel like you need them you know what route are you going to go with respect to purchasing or not purchasing because it is a big deal now that there are four instead of two it's it's a higher cost than it was before i hope you found that helpful have a great day